So we ended up breaking some stuff last week. We had a lot of fun doing it, even though we only went 10 feet. But if you're ready to find out what we're about to do this week, if the car actually got a little bit faster, then stick around. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and let's get right into it. If you guys haven't noticed, I've been doing one mod at a time trying to get this car where I want it to be. I'm about to show you what we're doing now on top of the upgrades that we did last week. This is the data that some of you guys are looking for. If this car hooks and a better 60 foot than it's ever has, then we know that our suspension mod, some of our body mods like subframe connectors are starting to work. So this car is starting to kind of transform into a street strip car where all of our cars are at anyways. Let me go back here and show you what Cousin Paul and Cousin Fred are doing and what we've been doing as an upgrade to the axle. As you can see last week, we had a little bit of a problem on Wednesday. Um, had a little bit of a problem with our differential. Let's go take a look. So let's go over what happened last week at the track. As you guys know with my videos, I basically, I changed the valve springs and we changed the rockers trying to make the car make an 11 second pass. But last week, we ended up getting up to the line and we ended up breaking parts. This is the differential that we broke. I thought we broke the transmission, but it was actually the differential. We have a pretty good idea on what happened and what failed. And we're pretty sure that it was the pin. We think that the pin started walking itself loose and it let the middle pin in the differential slide out. As you can see, it hit the differential cover and must have just broke the diff. But it probably hit the housing, and, but there's no damage to the housing. I was really excited to bring you guys a video that had the valve springs in it and making a pass, but we had a fuel regulator problem that we blew a uh, diaphragm up in. So we decided to do the rockers the next week because we're running out of Wednesdays and running out of Saturdays to run the car, and then we break a diff. So third time's a charm, right? We'll see what happens this week. But let me go over here and show you some more of the carnage. If you look at this, we got a lot of things going on here. I've been collecting Explorer and Fox body parts for a long time. And one nice thing about collecting these parts is you can get ring gears and differentials and stuff like that. So we have a 31 spline Explorer differential. This is a cheap junkyard mod. We have already got it installed. We've already got brand new clutch packs because we keep those on the shelf. We decided this week to go ahead and put the Explorer differential in. The uh, gears actually set to backlash. We're gonna go ahead and stick our axles back in the car for us to put back in here. We're gonna lock this differential back down. This time we're gonna use red Loctite instead of blue. We probably should have, but I've fought this bolt many, many times. But like I said, I think this is where we failed because this pin was bent when it came out and there was just proof that this, it just, Worked its way out, hit the side of the housing, and just broke in half. Because honestly, bros, there's no way a 320 horsepower car broke an Eaton 31 spine diff. So it had to be some sort of a mechanical failure. And I'm pretty sure me and Cousin Paul and Cousin Fred figured it out yesterday. So what this week, right? If you haven't noticed, we put control arms on. Fellas, these control arms have seen better days. When you start seeing chunks missing out of your... Urethanes, look at that. That's a classic. These things have been in the car too long. It's here. I mean, you got them here. There's cracking and dry rotting. These are the type of things that you have to replace. Now, can you reuse your factory ones? Absolutely. You can pop these out and get brand new ones as long as they're not bent or whatever. But usually at this point, it would be cheaper just to get just a cheap set of new control arms another thing we did this week which is imperative to doing the control arm swap is we went ahead and changed these upper 8.8 .8 differential housing bushings now if you don't know what i'm talking about cousin paul show you what we pulled out of there now i know we drilled or whatever but this thing was the same way the other control arm bushings were and here is the 
actual instructions on how to do it. And you see where they go. So what's that mean for the bushings? Now we have upper 8.8 upper .8 differential bushings in our, our car. It's gonna tighten this car up. We got new control arms here with brand new bushings. Everything's nice and clean and tight again. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bushings that got replaced. So you probably ask, why is that important? Well, having new bushings allows the car to be tighter, allows it to drive straighter, allows it not to have sway or twist. And in a drag racing sense, it basically allows you to hook better. So I fully expect to get a little bit better 60 foot this week. You know, you can only get so good with a stock car anyways, but I think the best we did was a 155 60 foot. But I noticed about the car by street driving the car too is it's it was it was kind of swaying a little bit, you know, and it just wasn't it wasn't tight. And one of the biggest problems that these cars have at this age is the fact that all their bushings are pretty much not tight anymore. That's what we did this week. I'm going to stop rambling on. We're going to finish putting this dip together, get these axles in. We're going to clean everything up and we're going to get this car back in the trailer. If we can get through this week without breaking something, the next week's mod will probably be the GT40 intake that we, we've already got it planned. Let me show you. Again, if you haven't noticed that I've been doing these mods one at a time to show you just the differences because I think it's imperative to show that sort of stuff. Many guys spend lots of money on mods and throw parts at cars and they don't understand that, hey, you can't just do that and expect it all to work. So you can see me and cousin Paul back here in the treasure chest and we have an old GT40 intake that was on GBH, our old black coupe, when we were first running stock bottom and stuff. So, you know, it wasn't the best intake. We've had it fixed or whatever, but, you know, it works amazing. So, we're going to put this on Dad's car next week, and we're going to send it. So, yeah, guys, that's about it. Me and Cousin Paul are going to do some work. We're going to come back here in a, little few, in a few hours, and we're going to put this car back together. And uh, we're going to get it off the lift, clean it up, and get it back in the trailer for uh, Wednesday's racing car. Don't forget, on Sundays, we usually try to live stream at 8 o'clock, and we're going to try to start live streaming out here in the garage, and we could, you know, hit the environment or whatever. So, see you soon. I appreciate everybody. Thanks.